Hi friends, this is Krish Di Urban Naxal and we are going to talk about Club Mahindra and how Club Mahindra has been uh, well mis-selling and up-selling its memberships and what are the findings of NFRA, National fin Financial Reporting Authority and all these things. And uh, actually, uh, Brigadier Vivek Chhatri was going to talk about it. But you know what? There has been, it's a battle. It's a battlefield out here. Court orders have been issued. Brigadier Vivek Chhatri has, it seems, been muzzled. And it seems Brigadier Vivek Chhatri must not speak. That is the kind of court order. I mean, whichever judge has issued that order, I'm, he is definitely not worth elevating to Bombay High Court or, or to Supreme Court. Please, I hope this kind of judges who pass this kind of unreasoned orders don't ever get elevated. There is a court order, it's an interim order, it's a badly formed order, it's a badly reasoned or a non-reasoned order. But there's an order. And there is a risk that some of our videos are going to get taken down. So I thought about it and while I was thinking about it, who should appear to make my life easy but my childhood hero, Phantom, THE Phantom, you know. The guy who lives in a skull cave in Africa. In his really deep voice, he reaches out to me and says, Hey Krish, I can speak on behalf of Vivek Chhatri. He sa I said, Mr. Walker, you sound like someone is doing an Amitabh Bachchan imitation. Stop kidding. This is serious. Krish, we are going to do what Brigadier Vivek Chhatri would have done. I said, what's that? He says, we got to expose these guys. We got to expose Club Mahindra. And we are going to expose them. I said, hey, that's really good. But what are we going to do about the voice? Because you have this really deep voice. And Mr. Walker says, don't worry, Krish. I can do imitations. So I'm absolutely thrilled to bring before you the phantom, Mr. Kit Walker, the ghost who walks. Hello, friends. My name is the ghost who walks. What were the promises made by... Club Mahindra holidays to its consumers. Basically, the promise says, you buy my membership. I will give you assured accommodation for one week in the choice of your destinations in my resorts. That is the first promise. You, the consumer, should give them money to maintain these resorts. That amount which is being given for maintenance which is called as annual subscription fees the asf will be utilized only for maintenance of the resorts and will not be utilized for anything else the scam involves wrongful gains by two means one is by sale of these rooms to non-members and second by the uh, diversion of the money you have paid for asf the wrongful gains that were made in 10 years, which has been mentioned by the company themselves in their annual reports. And that works out to for uh, rupees 403 crores from the year 2010 to 2020. Of course, one needs to go back since the time they started this business, sometime around 1996-98 and after 2020 also to quantify the exact amount of wrongful gains which have been made. So what were the rules for running the timeshare industry? There are certain guidelines which have been specified by the Ministry of Tourism. What do the guidelines say? Uh, for sake of simplicity, let's say that you have got only one room and you promise to rent out that room to one user. You can make a promise to only 52 people, assuming that that room is available right throughout the year. And you can't make a promise to a 53rd person because there are only 52 weeks in a year. So similarly now, let's take an example that uh, let's assume that Mahindra holidays had only 10 rooms all over the country. So they were entitled to sell the membership only to 500 and 20 members and not more 
However, what has happened actually? The not only the membership has been sold to one thousand people. There are large number of corporate users uh, users also who have been sold this membership, and they have been given this on point system. So, uh, infinite number of membership has been sold against a finite number of rooms. The company has also gone on to make certain declarations and admissions as to how they are supposed to conduct their business. These admissions were made in the year two thousand and seven, two thousand and nine, and two thousand and thirteen, when they wanted general public to buy their shares. In the draft red herring prospectus, they have made these admissions, wherein they have clearly stated that we cannot. Sell the membership to infinite number of people. The membership can be sold only to the number of resort rooms which are available with us. And even if you take that the promise was made in 2013, and the membership is being sold for 25 years, thus that promise is actually va- valid till 2038. But now. when they have been questioned by the nfra they go on to state that that time we had made certain declarations now our business purposes and our intentions have changed so these uh, these statements which we made when we went to the public at large and promised something are not valid anymore the next thing you need to understand is how were these rooms allotted to members they state that they have made a online booking system they have issued a set of rules to the members and as per these rules uh, a member can book even one day prior so today if i decide that i have to go to goa i can book a room in goa tomorrow that was the whole purpose of this membership now here on the quiet they made a rule which says that allotment of rooms will be subject to eligibility and availability let me explain this with a very simple example let us say a father and a son they have a contract the father tells the son ki okay son you going to behave and if you behave at the end of the day i am going to give you one chocolate so the son behaves throughout the first day first of the uh, uh, first date of the month he gets a chocolate on second he also gets a chocolate on third he gets a chocolate on fourth he doesn't get a chocolate and thereafter for later of the uh, later part of the month the chocolates are simply not given so obviously the son is going to ask the father the dad where are my chocolates so that time the dad tells the son he looks son we had a contract and that contract was subject to the availability and eligibility for the chocolates and today the chocolates are not available so i can't give you a chocolate so in the per, uh, first place when the dad made this kind of a promise it was the duty of the dad to ensure that he had adequate number of chocolates available with him so here it was the contractual obligation of mahindra holidays to ensure that first of all adequate room uh, number of rooms are available fine it might happen that for a particular destination there is excessive demand uh, they have collected money from you under two heads the first head is the membership fees which is supposed to be utilized either to construct new resorts or to lease resorts so let us say if in goa there is a excess demand who has stopped them to uh, from leasing additional resorts in goa let's say even after leasing they don't have adequate number of rooms they are welcome to buy it from the open market as a consumer you have given them advance money for 25 years what stops them from hiring a room of the same specifications from the open market and giving it to you so this is where they factored in the rule and they said ki no you have signed it is you who have signed that the accommodation will be 
given subject to eligibility and availability you have completed your part of the promise that was to give them the money money has been given it is now their obligation to outsource a room if rooms are not available and make it available to you so this is where they are trying to use this rule of subject to eligibility and availability to gain unfair advantage now comes the second point who are the actual users of these rooms and they made a booking system when you go to a particular site let's say you go to mahabaleshwar and you check the system only tells you that either there is a waiting list or it is fully booked and in rare occasions it says available let us assume that about 25% of members got the room of their choice for others they said that it is a waiting list so you wait you can take it subsequently in the the same year or you can use the rooms which are entitled to you even up to the next 2 years so you said okay fine i can't go now as a good consumer you said it's okay now i can't go let me check a uh, some other time and that some other time spilled up to the next year or even to the next year and when this was happening what were they doing they were selling the same rooms for corporate events for weddings the same rooms were available on booking.com and on agoda.com and so many other sites so some of these members these 25 percent members who were lucky to get the booking when they reached the resort they noticed that 50 to 75 percent of the uh, people who were present in the resort are non members and you know to add insult to injury the non members told them that we have not only got a room it has been given to us with free breakfast and whereas a large number of members first of all they did not get the room and even if they got the room they had to pay astronomical price for breakfast the basic issue was who has been using these rooms mahindra holidays for the last 2 and 1/2 years has refused to tell even the highest courts in this country how many rooms they have got for the members and here is another you know deceit which is being played out blatantly they say that they have got over 80 resorts they never specify the number of rooms and out of these 80 resorts about 20 to 30 of them some have got five rooms some have got 10 rooms and then another fantastic logic is being given they say fine you don't want to holiday in india we'll give you a room in thailand we'll give a room in cambodia we'll give a room in austria in finland or wherever and what they are hiding is to get this room first of all you have to surrender the entitlement of your room here in india and you have to pay a hefty exchange fee which goes to 15 to 20000 rupees to book these international destinations and they are trying to tell the consumers that look these are the rooms available these rooms internationally were never part of the plan what rooms were part of the plan was whatever advance has been given against that they have to give free assured accommodation at your destination choice of your destination so this is how the scam was being played and then added with this business of subject to eligibility and availability so how did the poor consumer suffer on day 1 he uh, did the booking he found a waiting list he said ki okay fine i'll not go now i'll go some other time in the year that some other time in the year also he didn't get the room then he said fine uh, the mahindra already told them we are banking 7 days in your kitty and you can avail it next year also next year again the same thing happened the entire room inventory was never offered in the booking system and this person didn't get the booking in that year also then that year also he accumulated 7 days so he had 14 days in his kitty he comes to the third year 
and again in the third year the same drama repeats so at the end of the third year he has got 21 days in his kitty without availing a single day and then comes the next most important rule they say that anything in excess of 21 days which is in your kitty will lapse so on one hand they themselves have gone ahead and created this scarcity of accommodation and on the other hand they state that after 3 years anything in excess for the fourth year whatever 7 days you are going to be credited in your account for which you have already paid in advance if you get this 7 days the 7 days of your first year will lapse they created a scarcity of rooms and thereafter they went on to seize your inventory and this is how the scam has been designed to run in perpetuity for the entire term of your 25 years membership and along with this was the caveat that they say fine i want to goa no today goa is not available i suggest you go to maldives what is hidden behind is for maldives you have to pay 15 to 20 thousand rupees per day why should you pay that you know, so th- this is how the whole scam was orchestrated, telling the consumers, ki, look, it is not me, it is you who have signed the rule that accommodation will be subject to eligibility and availability. The Indian Contract Act on this is very clear. It says that if you don't have accommodation available in your resorts, you are simply supposed to outsource it and provide the services to the person who is contracted to buy the service. Then the third issue regarding the use of maintenance fees. Here again, I will give you a small example. Let's say your son is staying in the hostel and there is an agreement between the dad and the son. He tells, the dad tells the son, he looks son, I will give you pocket money, but you have to utilize it only for your studies. You can buy books, you can buy computers, you can buy any material which is connected with education. This is, let us say, in a seven years course. So, in the second year, the son tells dad, Ki, nahi, Dad, whatever money you had given me, all this has been spent. And now this year, the inflation has increased. So, you have to increase the maintenance which is given to me. So, the dad says, okay, fine. Inflation has increased by 15%. I will give 15% more now. The third year, again, the son says, Ki, no, I have finished, exhausted all my money. Now give me more money for maintenance. So again, inflation has increased 10%. So again, he pays more, more than 10%. And every year, the dad c- continues to pay more. Let us say at the end of the fifth year, finally the dad is fed up. And he says, Ki, okay son, tell me how you have utilized this amount. So there the son goes on to tell the dad and says, sorry dad, I have not maintained any accounts. And later on, the dad realizes that the son has not only spent the money on education, he has gone uh, pubbing with that money, he has spent it on his girlfriends and so on. And at the end of the day, there are no accounts to tell the dad is the first discovery. And the second discovery is all the items of education, the prices have come down. So similarly, what Mahindra Holidays has been telling its consumers is we will collect money which will be used only for maintenance they were supposed to account for it separately as per the accounting standards there is no account whatsoever and they make virtue by stating that it is connected with the consumer price index and the wholesale price index when you go to the resort what are the facilities that are given to free to you your accommodation is given free to you the daily upkeep of your room in terms of changing the bed sheets, washing the room, cleaning the room and the overall activities that is the arboriculture of the, the garden of the resort and so on. Only these are the facilities which you can utilize. For everything else you are paying. For food you are paying an astronomical sum. For every activity whether it is Mehendi or whether it is Sangeet or whether it is uh, activities for kids, you are paying. And 
Now let us see what comprises the consumer in, uh, price index and the wholesale price index. The consumer price index, 50% of it is food. 10 to 15% of it is footwear, medical, and so on. Under 15, 20% is education. And hardly about 3% of it is electricity. So the only nexus that the consumer price index has got with your ASF is this 2.5 to 3% of electricity. Then let's take the wholesale commodities. In the wholesale commodities also one major group is for the food grains and so on which is not being provided free to you. The second group good has got a limited extent some items of furniture some items of uh, maybe textiles and so on which could have a very limited linkage with the ASF which you are paying. Uh, the consumer price index and the wholesale price index have got no logical nexus with the items of expenditure which are used in ASF and the company goes on to change the rules each and every day and now they tell the consumers ki yes 21 days are in your kitty for which you have paid both the membership fees as well as the ASF but since you are not paid ASF for the current year you can't avail these 21 days you know so that further adds on to this business of capturing your inventory I am reminded of the story of the fox and the stork when the fox invited the stork for dinner the fox served the soup in a open platter so that the stork you know his beak could not pick up anything the same story is repeating here all over again with impunity with disregard for laws of the land multiple violations of the companies act for which we will be locking the NCLT soon and the actions of the company fall foul of various criminal laws in the country. The codes protect those who are vigilant about their rights. Don't just stand on the sidelines and watch the show. Learn to fight for your rights. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.